what is up? I believe this is something I have not ever made a video about, and that is doing isolation tests when you're trying to find a leak. A uh, leak that you were not able to pick up with uh, electronic leak detection, or by using nitrogen and bubbles, you know, and you didn't want to put the dye in there. This particular unit, circuit one, was dead flat on refrigerant when they did the maintenance on it, so I just scheduled to come back and do leak search and repair. Usually when you find zero PSI in the system, you know, you expect us to put nitrogen in there and it's going to start dropping while you're watching the gauges, you're going to squirt bubbles, you're going to find it. Nope. I even put a little bit of refrigerant back in the circuit, used my electronic, could not pick up nothing with the electronic. <laughs> and this is something you just have to do sometimes, is you're gonna isolate the sections. And there is four sections on this particular circuit because this unit has both the evaporator coil and a reheat coil uh, in front of it here in the evaporator section or indoor air section. So in fact, it's kind of a little harder to get to the evaporator coil to check it or run the sniffer when you had the uh, reheat coil there. So what I've done is I cut pipes, pinched it, sealed it, sealed the suction there, sealed the liquid line after the uh, filter where I took the filter out, took the reheat coil, hot gas in, coming back out, you know, liquid, Just cut it, put a Schrader. Out the coil section, I cut the lines, sealed it, put a Schrader on there. And then the middle section with the compressor and all these, uh, gas valves, you know, changeover valves. I just left them sealed. So, so indoor coil section. I'm going to screw it on. This is what you do. Indoor coil section. 200, 200 PSI. Uh, compressor section, you know, with all the goodies right here. There's a lot of places for leaks in here. 201, basically 200. I had these just all pumped up, just a little over 200. I called it 200, but I knew one of them. And that's the other thing about isolation test. When it's all together, it takes a lot longer for the nitrogen to drop. And over a weekend, it did drop from 250 to 60. So now it's been two two days again since uh, I actually isolated it. So when you isolate the sections, the section that's leaking is going to lose its pressure faster because it's less volume. You're not leaking the one same uh, amount of leak with the volume of the whole system, it only has the volume of that circuit you isolated. So I'm screwing this on the isolated outdoor section. 195, 196, it's pretty much good. I think that was the last thing I charged up. I just got it to 200, but with me hooking this up a few times, probably dropped a few PSI, but that, that circuit's okay. All right. All right. Over here for the uh, moment of truth. This is going to the reheat coil section. Screwing this on. Boom. <laughs> 8 PSI. So, yeah. Barring that there's a leak right here at these two points that I created. <laughs> um, it is pretty sure that the leak is in the reheat coil. So that has been confirmed. Isolation test could just make you know. Basically rule out what's not leaking and narrow down what definitely is leaking so we never so there might be a little turn of events still trying to see if I could pinpoint the leak I cranked the nitrogen up to well over 500 psi it's already dropped down to 470 within minutes squirting everything down trying to get back in there where that oil stain is and then I'm checking out here and I'm finally hear something it's not as loud as it is now because I shook this but they spot welded them together, or they just welded them together. It looks like a piece of copper stuck in between, and then they welded it. But it is coming from there. Of course, when I shook the crap out of it after hearing it, you know, and with all the pressure, it started leaking even better. So, wow. Got it really going now. So, how about that? So, use the wire wheel to clean up that area, and that is a thick weld right there bridge between the two and the leak is right on top of it on that right pipe I guess it must be just it must have made it weak and it cracked probably from vibrations or something so I'm gonna have to just uh, flow a bunch of solder in there and just hope I get it I welded the shite out of that pipe and it seems to be holding and it has not dropped at all 
So the next thing I've been doing, you know, is you got to put all the isolation points back together. So normally people would just cut this and get some couplers and whatnot, but since I've had a the spinning swage kit for a year or so now uh, I don't really use couplers hardly ever and this kit here actually goes up to 7 8 pipe so I just used it here on this half inch pipe and on that 5 8 pipe up there so I'm getting ready to tuck this back up into its cavity there and of course the suction line was 7 8 on this bad boy I used it to swage both ends of this and then I used a piece of copper in between Okay, now I got the system all tied back together. Section line tied back together. Uh, not looking like the carnage it once looked like <laughs> during the isolation test. Uh, most people aren't even gonna really notice that these lines were uh, disconnected. And now with it all tied back together, it is holding pressure and I am getting ready to dump the nitro and start the vacuum pump. Have this sucker fixed at last.